Good morning, everyone. Our entrance antiphon is, in the midst of the church, he opened his mouth, and the Lord filled him with the spirit of wisdom and understanding, and clothed him in a robe of glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Thank you. Very imp- uh, appropriate antiphon for St. Ambrose, the bishop and doctor of the church that we celebrate today on this memorial. Also the uh, anniversary, the 80th anniversary of Pearl Harbor. So a very important day in our country's history and in the history of our church as we celebrate St. Ambrose, a great writer, uh, a great fighter for the faith. So let us ask God to give us the energy to uh, live out our faith well and uh, with courage and to fight for, in a sense, what we believe uh, and to uh, do what we can to bring God's love and goodness to our world. Lord, we praise you for the faith that has been passed on to us by so many good people. We ask that you give us a faith that overcomes obstacles in our lives and to help us overcome the darkness in our world. We pray, Lord, have mercy. mercy. Christ, have mercy. mercy. Lord, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all of our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. O God, who made the Bishop St. Ambrose a teacher of the Catholic faith and a model of apostolic courage, raise up in your church people after your own heart to govern her with courage and wisdom through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain. The rough country, a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out, I answer. What shall I cry out? All flesh is grass, and all their glory like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower wilts, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. So then, the people is the grass, though the grass withers, and the flower wilts. The word of our God stands forever. Go up into a high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings. Cry out to the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God, who rules by his strong arm. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom and leading the youth with care. The word of the Lord. The Lord our God comes with power. 
Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all you lands. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Announce the salvation day after day. Tell his glory among his nations, among all peoples, his wondrous deeds. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. He governs the people with equity. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the sea and what fills it resound. Let the plains be joyful and all that is in them. Then let all the trees of the forest rejoice. They shall exult before the Lord, for he comes. For he comes to rule the earth. He shall rule the world with justice and the peoples with his constancy. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, what is your opinion? If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them goes astray, will he not leave the ninety-nine in the hills and go in search of the stray? And if he finds it, a man I say to you, he rejoices more over it than over the ninety-nine that did not stray. In just the same way, it is not the will of your heavenly Father that one of these little ones be lost. The Gospel of the Lord. The Catholic Church, the Christian Church in the fourth century, moved from being a persecuted church to eventually, at the end of the fourth century, becoming the official religion of the Roman Empire, an incredible transition and change. And in that time of transition, especially the second half of the fourth century, is when when St. Ambrose uh, lived and was bishop. And he was a very strong voice. He was kind of feisty, a fighter. And in that time, he had to fight uh, for the truth of the church. He had to fight against uh, a very, very uh, profound heresy called Arianism that basically claimed that Jesus was not God. And so he was one of the, the, the bishops, one of the leaders of the church at that difficult time of transition to really fight for the truth of our faith. He stood up against not just uh, the Arian priests and bishops and leaders of that heretical sect, but even stood up to emperors and empresses uh, for uh, the truth to come through. So in many ways, uh, a person that really fought for the faith in the best sense of the word, not with violence so much, but with a strong personality. So in some ways, Ambrose shows that sometimes a shepherd, a bishop who's a shepherd, has to be strong in leading and fighting for the sheep and fighting for our faith. And in the first reading today in the gospel, we have the beautiful image of God as a shepherd. Uh, The first reading, it's from the book of the prophet Isaiah, uh, the beginning of the second part of of Isaiah's writings that took place. uh, They're all put together in one book in our Bible, but there are actually three different Uh, books in that, uh, 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 under that name of Isaiah the prophet. And this is the beginning of the second book called the Book of Consolation, meant to be a comforting message of the people, uh, the Jewish people who are 
had been in Babylon in exile for many years. So a very comforting message that God will be like a shepherd and bring them back home to their homeland, bring them back to security and so on. But in the gospel, Jesus takes that image of shepherd even further. He says a shepherd is one who's going to go and look even for one lost sheep. And I'm sure you've heard at some point some homily saying that it makes absolutely no sense to leave 99 sheep in the wilderness to go look for one. You just cut your losses. Forget the one. You want to save the 99, right? But the point of this parable is not practicality. It's all about the, the love that God, that Jesus has for each one of us. Jesus loves all of us, loves all people, uh, but not just us as a whole, but he loves each one of us uniquely and infinitely. He knows us intimately as a shepherd knows each one of his sheep. And so it's a very, very powerful image of the love that God has for us, the care he has for us, but also that our God is that shepherd who is relentless, who is in a sense a fighter for us, who will go and search for us and who loves us perhaps even more when we are lost, who will never give up on us. And I've come across so many people that They say, Father, I just don't know. God can't forgive me because of what I've done. And, you know, whether it's in confession or counseling or they haven't been to church for a while because they feel unworthy. And if only they knew that God loves them so much and he'll never, never give up on us. What a powerful message that is for all of us to receive that love of God, to know that God will never, never turn his back on us, will always seek us out whenever we are lost, whenever we are 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 astray. Uh, He never gives up on us. So let us take comfort in that fact and do our own and in our own uh, uh, play our own part in fighting for our faith, in, in being relentless in loving others who hurt us, who somehow wandered away from doing good things and never give up on them and trust that somehow God will help, the, uh, help them and help us to, to, to find his goodness uh, in our lives. Our Lord is the good shepherd. Let us stand and offer our prayers to the Lord this day. Lord, we thank you for St. Ambrose and so many people throughout the history of our church that have fought for the faith that have struggled against powers and against uh, untruths to bring us our faith and help us uh, to inspire us in living out our own faith, Uh, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We thank you most of all, Lord, for being our good shepherd, for caring for us, leading us, and guiding us, and for seeking each of us out, even when we sin, even when we stray from the truth, stray from uh, your loving arms. Help us to open our hearts to you and let you welcome us back. We pray to the Lord. We pray that all leaders of church and state would have this kind of compassion for the people they lead, especially for the poor and vulnerable, that they would do all that they can to protect those who need their help the most. We pray to the Lord. We pray at this Mass in a special way for the repose of Ambrosio and Magdalena Solonga. We lift them up to the Lord. And this day is also the second year death anniversary of Ray Roldan. So we pray for Ray, for uh, Letty, his wife who's here, and the, the children, all the loved ones. We lift all of them up to the Lord. We pray to the Lord. And in a moment of silence, let us lift up our personal needs to our loving God. For all these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord. Holy God, you are the good shepherd who loves each one of us. May we follow you always and listen for your voice. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. I invite you to sing number 616 in your books, I Have Loved You, number 616. 616.
I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have called you, and you are mine. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have called you, and you are mine. Seek the face of the Lord and long for him. He will bring you his light and his peace. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have called you and you are mine. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have called you, and you are mine. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this, our sacrifice, and that we ourselves might be acceptable to our loving and almighty God. As we celebrate the divine mysteries, O Lord, we pray, may the Holy Spirit fill us with that light of faith by which he constantly enlightened St. Ambrose for the spreading of your glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Ambrose you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with a company of angels and saints we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service that of your whole family, 
Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We stand once again and we pray in the words that Jesus, our Savior, taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. Now let us safely offer to each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. My brothers and sisters, behold Jesus, the good shepherd, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. I am not worthy that you should enter my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. We say it together once again the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Lead us who have been strengthened by the power of this sacrament, O Lord, so to profit from the teaching of St. Ambrose that hastening fearlessly along your paths, we may be prepared for the delights of the eternal banquet through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Don't forget, tomorrow is a holy day of obligation, so we have Masses at 8 a.m., 6 p.m. in English, and then 7.30 p.m. in Spanish.